Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and welcome to the show, y'all. Now, in part one, I was talking about, in part one of My Daddy Was a Monster, I was talking about how Tammy uh, had this image of her father that uh, was based on what her mother had told her, her visits with her father, and how her father treated her at visit on the phone and in and letters that he wrote to her, and how uh, after all these years, Tammy's mom had told her father that uh, she wanted to have a relationship with somebody, at least on the physical aspect, because he couldn't provide for her in that way. And she ended up falling in love with this guy, and the guy fell in love with her. And this pushed Tammy closer to her father, right? So Tammy's closer to her father, so she's she's a teenager, though. She's a teenager. She has a boyfriend, so she understands as much as she can what that means to be in love with somebody and care about somebody in that way and want to be with them. But she can't understand her mother's uh, desire to be uh, in a relationship with someone other than her father. I get that. I get that. But life happens. So she gets closer to her father and the time is coming for uh, Tammy to start to try to decide what it is she wants to do with her life. And she was at visit one day with her mom and her dad, and and they were talking, and she said that she wanted to go to law school. So her dad reminded her, you know, years ago that she had told him that, you know, when she grew up and graduated, she wanted to go to school to become a lawyer to get him out. And she said she remembered that, and she was going to go to college and become a lawyer and follow through with that. Now, keeping in mind, you know, she's 18 now. She's about to graduate college. So it's 15 years that have passed. So that means he's been in prison for 15 years, you know, and he's got about 20 more to go. So she graduates from high school and she goes off to college. And she does her time in college and and graduates. And then she goes to law school and she actually becomes a lawyer. She actually becomes a lawyer. Now, during this time, she's still visiting her father, sometimes without her mother, because she's an adult now. And they have grown so close that uh, she's determined to get him out. She's determined to get him out. And her um, boyfriend, she's been with him the whole time from high school to now. And what she's not sharing with her father is that her boyfriend has been abusive to her. That image that she has of her mother and father's relationship coming to an end because her mother would not stand by her father in all matters, right? It caused her to start to uh, accept uh, the treatment that her boyfriend would dish out to her every now and then, Uh, not because she didn't know it was wrong, but because she wanted to be able to live up to this idea of what it was she thought her mother should have been living up to with her father. So she held that secret. She held that secret from her dad. She didn't tell him initially that her boyfriend had been abusive to and beat her a few times while she was in school because they were living together. He had moved down. Or he wasn't going to school. He had moved to the, uh, the state that she was in where she was going to school and had a job. And they were living as a couple. They weren't married, he, even though he had proposed. Uh, they weren't married yet. But she was keeping this secret from her father and her mother. Her mother was in a relationship, that same relationship, and she it was flourishing, and uh, the guy had proposed to her, but she she just couldn't find it in her heart to divorce uh, her husband and uh, marry him, even though that's what she wanted. She, she just felt really, really guilty about this, so she remained married. She remained married, and she had no intentions at this point of being with him once he got out, but she just didn't want to do that while he was in there. She wanted to wait until he got out, and then she would do that. So she told the guy, and the guy understood. They were really in love. He really cared about her. He treated her in a way that she had never been treated before. You know what I'm saying? He really cared about what she thought and, and what she wanted to do with her life. And they were doing just fine. 
They were living together. And Tammy had come to accept that. She didn't agree with the relationship, but she had come to accept that and she, because she saw how he treated her mother. She saw that, but she still held this, um, this dissatisfaction in her heart about her mother not sticking it out with her father. And this is what mainly, uh, mentally, uh, in her mind, made, rather, made her want to stick with her boyfriend, even though he was abusive. It was. It had become for Tammy what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? Just make it look good, not let it be good. If she didn't understand that, she was still mentally, even though she was highly intelligent, she was still a child. She was stuck on this idea of what a relationship was supposed to be and not what a relationship actually is. And if you find yourself in a bad situation like that, that you're supposed to do something about it. She didn't. She hadn't gotten to that level yet. See, a person can be book smart. You understand what I'm saying? But life smart is a big difference. She didn't. She didn't have that. She couldn't comprehend that. She can comprehend that, and she, but she, it's some part of her knew because people that keep secrets from other people, they understand that this may not be acceptable to the people that you love, and if you told them that they might uh, uh, tell you that you might need to leave, or she just didn't want to shatter that image of, I got the perfect relationship, I'm on a career path, it's going to be great, and everything is going to work out, I just got to give it time. Because that's how she felt about her mom and dad. If her mom would have just given it time and stuck with him until he got out, even though it was 35 years, you know what I'm saying, that she would have to wait, she felt that her mom should have waited. And it was forcing her, it was causing her to rationalize staying with an abuser. So she stayed. She stayed with him. So one day she was at visit with her dad and she was talking to him, and her dad noticed some things. He noticed some things because her boyfriend was at the visit with them, right? And an abuser can identify an abuser. And he noticed how they interacted with each other. He saw all the things that were going on. You know what I'm saying? The little bitty things, you know, the the, the looking at him before she said certain things. Uh, if he started to talk, how she would stop talking. You feel what I'm saying? It was everything about deferring to him, you know. And he noticed that. So one day when he, the, the boyfriend went to the vending machine to get them some food out of the vending machine and heat it up in the microwave, her dad asked him, is, asked Tammy, is, is everything okay? And she said, yeah, everything's fine. Why do you ask? And he told her, he said, well, I noticed how you act sometimes when your boyfriend says this or does that, right? And he just asked, her dad asked her straight out. He said, are you afraid of him? And she put her head down in shame because at this moment she had been confronted with something that she had never been confronted with. She thought her secret was safe with her. Nobody knew what was going on but her and him. And now her dad had seen something and asked her something in a way that was so direct, that was so revealing, that it was almost like she couldn't run away from it. And when she had her head down, her dad lifted her head up and he said, talk to me. And she had never seen his face like that. He was compassionate, but he was angry because he knew the answer. He knew the answer. He was looking at himself. He was looking at himself and he had to you know, struggle with that because do I come to the defense of my daughter? Or do I let this monster, do I let this monster dominate her? And he came to the defense of his daughter. He said, look, listen to me. If he's abusing you, get out. And she looked at him because she didn't know. She didn't know that her father was this monster. She had no idea. She just thought that her father knew because he was a good father, a good man. Again, this idea of who he was is what she was resting on. This idea of who he was, 
this this idea, this concept that was planted in her head by her mother and her father. This is what she was drawing from. And she reached out and she hugged her dad. And when her boyfriend came back to the table, they didn't say a word. But the boyfriend could tell that the father's demeanor was different. Like I said, an abuser could recognize an abuser. And the boy, he looked at her father. And they both just stared each other down. And the father said, well, visit's coming to an end. We're going to have to leave. He said, but can I talk to you for a minute? So he pulled the boy to the side and he told Tammy to go to the desk and get the IDs because, you know, you turn in your IDs and all that kind of stuff. You get your pass when you're ready to leave. So she went to the desk to pick up that from the officer because they were about to leave. And in that little brief time, he told her boyfriend, I know what you're doing. So the boyfriend looked at him and said, what are you talking about? Trying to play naive. And he said, if you're abusing my daughter, you better stop. It's going to be problems. So when he said that to the boy, the boy looked back at him and he said, this is our relationship. This is our relationship. And I love her. But sometimes, you know, we disagree on things. And I got to set her straight. I got to put her in her place. I got to remind her that she's under me. She's a woman. So this pissed him off to no ends because he was being confronted with something that he had never confronted himself with. He was being shown something. A mirror was being put up to him. He was no longer looking out a window, but he was looking in a mirror and he saw himself in there. And the anger that he was feeling was not necessarily at the boy exclusively. It was at himself as well because he started to understand a lot of things about himself. And in that moment, he knew he didn't have the moral authority to correct that boy. He had abdicated that years ago. Before this boy was even on the scene, he had abdicated that. He had given that up because he had done the same thing to Tammy's mother. He was abusive towards her. But he had never been confronted with it like this in a bold way. Telling him that I had to put her in a place. See, he knew those words. He was familiar with those words because that's how he lived. But see, he had lost control over Tammy's mother because he had been separated from her by prison. And now he started to evaluate that. And the boy saw this in him. He saw that, he saw that lapse in judgment, that, that one moment of uncertainty, and he walked away. And when he walked away, he grabbed Tammy by the hand and said, let's go. He wouldn't even allow her to hug her father. And when they left and they got into the parking lot, he beat her right there in the parking lot at the prison. He beat her in the parking lot and said, what did you tell him? And she cried and she begged him. I didn't say anything. He doesn't know. And the boy said, yeah, he does. And the boy told her what Drake had said to him. Terror washed all over her. Terror washed all over her. But still, she didn't know the truth about her father. So the boy wouldn't even allow her to go visit her father anymore. And after several months, several months, she was walking on the campus one day and somebody passed out these, this one of these pamphlets to her about domestic abuse. And when she got the pamphlet, she saw it and she read it. And she stuck it in her pocket. And she went to a class. And they talked about her. Everything that they were seeing, all the women that were in there, and some men, young boys, it was about them. 
being abused by the person that said that they loved them. And they offered them help. But they had to confront the truth of their situation. And Tammy did that. She told the truth to the counselor. And the counselor provided her with an escape plan to get away from it. So she was snuck away one night. They moved her to another city, transferred her schooling, and got her away from it. He had no idea where she was at. But what he did know is where her father was at. He knew where her father was at. Her father was at the prison. And this program didn't add that element into it. It didn't add that element into it because she still had to live life. But they were more focused on her not living with him. But she did get a protective order against him. So when she went to see him at the prison, he was waiting for her in the parking lot. She rushed into the prison crying. And one of the guards asked her what was wrong and she told him. So he called the police for her. But by then, he was gone. Her boyfriend was gone. Her ex-boyfriend, he was gone. But now they were looking for him. And he would not be allowed on the state property anymore. She went into the prison and told her father what happened because she hadn't seen him for months. And it made him so sad, he cried. He sat at the table and he cried and he cried and he cried. And while he was crying, he had to confront the truth about himself. He had to confront the truth about himself. And he told his daughter, I'm so sorry that this happened to you. And she asked him, how did you know? How did you know that something was wrong? And he told her, he said, I recognize the signs. And that confused her. It confused her because in the class, she learned about all the signs that an abused person exhibits and how to recognize them herself. But she never knew that her father had had that type of training. So she was like, when did you take this class? And she, he said, I didn't take a class. And he took a deep breath and he looked at her and he took her hands in his and he told her, he said, oh, it's something I need to tell you. And she squares his hands, just letting him know that whatever it was, it would be okay. And he told her, he said that I was like this towards your mother. That's how I knew. I knew the signs because your mother put her through so much over the years before I came to prison and while I was in prison. Everything that I saw you do that day, she had done. I knew when I saw you going through that that something was wrong because I was that abuser. So Tammy pulled her hands back away from his. She was startled. She was afraid. For the first time, she was afraid of her father. That image, that concept that she had in her mind of who he was, was broken. It was shattered. It was shattered by him being honest with her. And she said in her mind, I mean, talking to him, she said in her mind that I never knew. But she couldn't get the words out of her mouth. I never knew. And she started to think about her mom and how she had treated her mom these last few years. And everything became clear to her. She started to understand why her mom wanted somebody else. She understands now. She sat there with her father in silence for the next hour. And they cried and they cried, but she couldn't muster the words. She could not muster the words to say that it was going to be okay. She didn't know what to say. And her father understood that. He understood that. Because now that he had been confronted by what he saw his daughter go through, he was working on himself. And he told Tammy that he was working on that by taking some domestic violence classes 
and that he understood that his wife, his her mother, he understood why she wanted to be away from him. He started to get it. He was still hurting because it's a process, but he understood now better than he ever had in his life. And when the visit ended, they hugged. And for the first time, for the first time, when he hugged her, he told her that he loved her. He really understood what that meant. He really understood what that meant. When you love somebody, you protect them. You don't hurt them. When you love somebody, you honor them. You don't dishonor them. He understood that. And the embrace that she felt from him, she knew it was different. She knew that this was a different person, a different man. But what was on her mind was her mother. And she wanted to get to her mother. She hadn't seen her mother in a while because she had to heal up from the beating that her boyfriend gave her the last time she was there to see her father. So after she left the visitation, she rushed home to her mother. And when she saw her mother, she just hugged her. Now her boyfriend was in the, in the house and she grabbed her mother by the hand and she said, come on, let's talk. And her mother was shocked. She was surprised. She's like, what's going on? She didn't know what this was about. She didn't know what was going on, but she saw an eagerness in her daughter. She saw a pep in her step in her daughter that she hadn't seen in years. Who is this person? This is, this is the child. This is the daughter that she raised, eager, ambitious, quick to learn, understanding what was going on around her. And her daughter told her, and she told her in front of her boyfriend that I understand now what's going on. My daughter told her that she had been a victim of abuse and that for years her boyfriend had been beating her and her mother cried and grabbed her by the hands and told her that why, why didn't you tell me? And she said, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you because I was so angry at you for leaving daddy. I didn't want to admit that I wanted to leave him because I didn't want you to leave daddy. And then she looked at her mom's boyfriend and she said, thank you. Thank you for saving my mother, for loving my mother. And they all cried together. They all cried together. And when they finished talking, Tammy had decided with her mother and her boyfriend to move back into the house and she would finish school, but they wanted her there to protect her. They wanted her there to protect her. And she told her mom about her dad and how he was the one that recognized it and how he was the one that admitted that he did her like that. She wanted her to know that he understood now. She wanted her mom to know her dad had learned. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. I've been trying to breathe underwater.